first record of observations with a telescope. Earliest published record. It was printed in 1610 by Galileo. Okay. So it's 399 years old. And see that little white circle right there? Galileo said that's a mountain peak because when the sun rises over here and is shining from the side, it will shine on the peak of the mountain before it shines on the base. Well. So a mountain would look like a white circle. And that triangle pointing toward it, that would be a foothill. Rising up above the plain, the plain would still be dark. Well. So he said the way to prove that there's mountains on the moon is to look at this shadow line. And from night to night, even looking at the same thing, when the shadows are different, you're going to see different, different forms because the sun will be coming from a different way. So the, the next night, the same mountain peak might look like a chain of mountains, or the next night might look like that. He wasn't mapping the moon or saying there's a crater there that size. He was showing us what to look for to know that there are mountains and craters and things, to, things on the surface of the moon to be mapped. Cool. So within half a century, the moon was mapped accurately enough to show where the Apollo landings took place. Good. Goodness. But in the back, he has over 60 observations of Jupiter. So see, here's Jupiter, and as Jupiter is moving across the sky from night to night, there are four stars that track with it. Sometimes you can only see three. Why would that be? The one's behind it? Yeah, one is behind or in front. But by having so many observations, you can tell these are moons of Jupiter. So these are the Galilean moons. And this proved that you couldn't argue against Copernicus by saying that the moon shouldn't be a Cool. But Galileo had another idea. Jupiter stood for the Grand Duke of Tuscany. It stood for most kings, actually, but the Grand Duke of Tuscany in Florence was of the Medici family, and Galileo really wanted to go, go be in the Medici court. He didn't like working in the university where he was. And the Grand Duke had four sons. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> what could be better? So we call them the Galilean moons, but guess what he called them? This is how you got a job back in those days. <laughs> he called them the Medician stars. <laughs> And look at the word Medicean. Mm -hmm. It's a pasteover. Oh. So he got that name later. This was the first oh. page printed. He was in a rush to get this book out before anyone else would scoop him and report it first. So by the time he got to the end, he said, no, I should call those the Medicean stars. So he's pasted that over in every copy. Oh, my goodness. His first name was the Cosmic Stars. <laughs> and then he wrote a dedication saying... Serenissimo Cosimo Medici II, and so on. The Grand Duke just died. He dedicated it to the oldest son of the Grand Duke. This preface was, Scarcely have the immortal graces of your soul begun to shine forth in this new reign. Then the stars themselves have, have announced this great message of all the good things that will happen while you are Grand Duke. <laughs> Pretty good way to get it so down. So the, star, the stars had a message, and that's the name of the book, Sidereus Nuncius, Starry Messenger. Mm -hmm. He's the ambassador or messenger, not from Venice, but from <laughs> the stars, the heavens. And the message he's bringing is that Jupiter was very important in Cosimo's horoscope the day he was born. <laughs> Jupiter foretells great things about Cosimo's reign. Like he'll bring me, he'll bring Galileo, <laughs> Florence, and it worked. Uh -huh. um, so, a few months later, he arrived in Florence, and he was made both mathematician and physicist to the Grand Duke. And he had a friend there who was a poet named Gabriel Cabrera, and he gave this copy to Gabriel, oh and he goodness. signed his name. That's his signature. So that's his signature, 399 years old. Good grief.